These are my chickens and currently they're exactly 14 days. That means in four weeks, which is one month from now, I expect them to be laying eggs. So this is the perfect time to prepare them to become egg laying monsters. You know, honestly, I've benefited so much from poultry farming. It has literally made me what I am now. It has made me what you guys know of me right now. And I do everything right now that I can to make sure that I give the chickens what they need so that they give me what I need. So if you can look inside the chicken house right now, these birds are perfect. They have grown up perfect, but there's one missing ingredient that we're going to be correcting today. And I'm going to be telling you about it right today. But first, I'll tell you all the things that we've done to them to make sure that they get to this point when they are perfect. Now you're probably wondering, how do you know that they are perfect? You see, there's one single indicator that shows that chickens are growing properly. Just like it happens in human beings, the weight the weight of the chickens. You see, when the breeder of the chicken supplies you with the chicks, they supply you with a guideline of the expected weight, you know, the target weight at a particular age, and that will show you whether the chickens are growing properly or they are not growing properly. If the chickens are not growing properly, you will clearly see it in terms of the weight. The weight will either slow down, it will not be increasing as quickly as you want, and that's the biggest indicator. A lot of farmers, the biggest issue that they have is that they don't use the weights properly. They don't measure the weights. They, they even never know how heavy the birds are. The thing with chickens is that you can never tell how where they are growing simply by looking at them using your eyes because they do have feathers and feathers can make something look big or small depending on how well they spread their feathers the feather pattern of the breed so it's very important that you take the weights of the chickens so we've been taking the weights of these chickens that you actually see in the background over time and right now i can tell you that they are right on target actually today being the last day of the week we're also going to be taking some weights and so i will show you guys exactly what i mean by the birds are on target hopefully they haven't lost any ground in the last few days but if they haven't then they are certainly on target if you can see them right now they look really nice their combs are starting to grow some of them have more developed combs than others but generally the comb development is uniform right here at the top we have some some cocks in the inside so if you look at that that white one that's a cock you know so that will not be laying eggs those ones they put inside here because you know they were selecting errors during the selection process you know it can be quite difficult to pick out the exact males because of the feather colors but once in a while you'll pick those ones out and you can see this one so you can see the beak first of all it was properly debeaked yeah it didn't have a, a long beak if you take a look at both these beaks yeah the beaks were properly cut off and the reason we cut off their beaks is so that they don't develop what they call vices there's some really terrible vices that can come from chickens having beaks the most common being Pecking, you know, they peck themselves, they feather peck themselves, and then they vent peck, so they start bleeding. Uh, recently, I had a farmer who contacted me, and he was telling me that his chickens had started pecking themselves, and he didn't know what to do. So what he did is that after some time, he decided to debeak them, but even after debeaking them, they continued to peck themselves. And that's the thing with vices, yeah? The thing with vices is that once the vice develops, it's so difficult to stop it. So you want to make sure that you prevent it right at the very beginning, before the vice comes in. So you need to make sure that the birds are depicted as early as possible. We depict ours in the ninth week. You can depict them anytime between the first day and uh, week 12, yeah? So around eighth, ninth week, we had, you know, uh, space to depict them. We had noticed that a few of them had started pecking the other's feathers out. So we decided to depict them. So we finished depicting them. They have gotten all their major vaccines right from day one, which is Merex. We've given them Newcastle and IB. We've given them Guboro. We've given them fall pox. We've given them fall typhoid. We've given them all the major vaccines that they're supposed to get. So in terms of vaccines, I don't expect that to be a problem. And if you can see right here, the chickens look fine, you know, they are nicely distributed, they are not all compacted in one area. They are moving very nicely right now. And you can see the drinkers, we actually have extra drinkers, if you can see. This is the usual drinkers that we have in the chicken house, and these are the automated drinkers. Ideal on a usual day, water would be coming down this pipe into the drinkers. But that's not what's happening right now. You can see that we have additional drinkers. That's a drinker which has vitamins. So we put additional drinkers when we have vitamins or medication that we are giving to the birds. And currently we are giving vitamins because we recently just vaccinated them against Newcastle disease. But there's one big problem. Have you seen the feeder right there? There is feed on the feeder and I swear you, if you can take a look at most of the feeders, you don't see any chickens feeding. Take a look at all the feeders right here. 
this entire line. Seen any chicken feeding? No. Maybe right there we have maybe two, three chickens feeding. Right here, they're just moving around. Take a look at this. They are even using this one as a roasting patch. Just sitting at the top. Take a look at that. So very few of the chickens are feeding, yeah? Maybe on the feeders that are farther away. So what happens is that during this period, you know, 12th week up to the 17th week, that's when there is rapid development of the reproductive system and that's responsible for the production of the eggs inside the chicken, yeah? So you need to make sure that during this time, there are two main things that happen. Number one, that there is proper development of the reproductive system, but number two, that there is also proper development of the gastrointestinal system. This system, especially the crop, is where the food is kept. I've told you guys previously before on my channel that the eggs are usually produced over 24 to 26 hours, yeah? That's usually over the night. An egg is produced in these chickens every 24 to 26 hours. So what that requires is that it requires that a chicken has enough feed inside its crop, enough storage inside its crop where it can get and store feed for it to use it to make eggs. Now when I get this chicken, I can assess whether it has food in its crop. You know, I'll just get it and try to fill its crop right here. Yeah, and when I fill its crop, I can tell that it has some feed in the crop. It has some feed, but not enough, yeah? Ideally, this thing should be bulging. The bird should have enough food right now to store in its crop at this point, yeah? It should have stored quite an amount of food. But there's some amount, but not as much as I would want. And the reason for that is because the chickens have so much food available. They have the food always available, and that makes them feel like food will always be available. What that creates is that the chicken then starts to eat only when it gets hungry. Yeah, the chicken will feed only when the crop gets empty because it feels like food is always available, and that's a bad thing. Remember that we want our crop to be full. We want the chicken to develop a big crop which it can use to store food when it starts laying egg throughout the night because this food is important in the production of an egg. If the crop remains small, it can only store a little food and this food is not enough for producing an egg. That means you're going to have your production affected. So what we need to do right now is we need to start stimulating these chickens to take up as much feed as possible. Ideally, what we want to do is we want to make these chickens feed like gluttons. You know a glutton. Yeah, you just throw food at them and they feed like that's the last day they are ever going to eat. That's what we want to create in these chickens. And how do you do that? Plain and simple, by creating scarcity. If the chickens always feel like food is always available, they will not eat like gluttons. But if you take away the food, like right now, I've shown you guys, most of the feeders have food and the chickens are not eating the food. We're going to take away all the food. We're going to start stimulating this scarcity today, yeah? So we're going to take away all the food right now, leave all the feeders empty, give them two hours. We know that in two hours, they'll be properly hungry. Then we'll bring feed, but in a small regulated amount, not all the feed, give them the feed, and we we'll let them consume the food as quickly as possible, give them again two hours, and then give them the food. And then after maybe two days of doing that, then we can start serving the food in portions. We give them some food in the morning and then we give them some food in the evening. What will happen is that they will start eating up really quickly because they know the food is going to get done, yeah? If I don't eat right now, in an hour's time, there'll be no food. So they all start eating the food as quickly and as quickly as possible. That way they stimulate their crop to become bigger. They get bigger storage inside their crops and then they are able to store more food and that increases their appetite. It increases the amount of food that they are consuming because honestly, I'm not so happy. Currently, they should be consuming about 70 grams per bird per day and they're still consuming 63 grams per bird per day. That's not nice at all. Despite the fact that they have gotten their target weight, they will not become monstrous at least eggs if that keeps up so we're going to stimulate that so come on guys let's start removing the food from the chickens so we're going to create the scarcity as you can see right now we're taking all the feed out of the feeders no, we're going to take away all the feed from the feeders it's still morning so maybe in, in two hours time we should be able to put the feed back but we're taking all the feed out of the feeders and as you can see we're going to leave the feeders empty yeah, and I'm going to give them two hours of not feeding. Same thing that side. We take all the feed out of the feeders, as you can see. Leave the feeders empty for two hours. Let them first move around with no feed. We'll certainly keep them with the water. Yeah, so they can always take water and they move around, you know, scratch. As you can see, we have litter inside the chicken house. It's sufficient. Yeah, the birds are only remaining here for 
maybe three more weeks maximum. So by the end of three weeks, we should have removed all this. Yeah, we should have removed the bird. So the litter is still very intact. Yeah, we've kept this litter inside from the time the birds moved here, which is which was around the seventh week. Yeah, so you can see the the cocks, our white cocks right there. You can see the drinkers. The drinkers have enough water. And this is one of the nice things. The drinkers are very clean. They are not dirty, as you can see. You know, as you move from drinker to drinker, you can see that the drinkers are clean. The chickens can really make drinkers dirty because as they scratch and play around, as you can see right here, food can go inside. So you need to make sure that the drinkers are consistently being cleaned, but they have enough water which is available and clean. And take a look at that, guys. Now that we've gotten the food out of the feeders, all of a sudden, the chickens are seeming to be very interested. Take a look at them. All of a sudden, they are seeming to be very interested. Yet, when there was a lot of feed in the feeders, there was totally no interest in the feeders. Can you take a look at that? So let them move around the feeders. Notice that there is no feed. You know, just keep moving around board. And in two hours time, we're going to get back and give them feed. Guys, you guys are going to see the difference when we give them feed in two hours time from now. hours later and right now we're going to move right into the chicken house and we're going to give the birds feed but before that we're going to weigh them yeah we're going to weigh them so considering they have been, they are hungry and they haven't eaten it's a good time to weigh them because it gives us a better approximation of how heavy they are without weighing food that they have eaten yeah their crops should be close to empty right now so let's first go and weigh them get the average weight and then after that we shall uh, give them the food. And step inside our food dip as usual, together with our tripod, right there. Okay, and then we'll get in. You no, know? go up. It's quite hot. It's very hot. It's a shiny day. All right. Hi, chickens. Hi, chickens. Okay. So here we are. You can see them. They are quite distressed right now because, as you can see, we have a tarpaulin. We want to separate just a few of them into a small corner, you know, separate by randomly. What we are going to do is that we are randomly going to get a few of them, push them into that corner, and then whatever is inside, we shall weigh a percentage of them, and then we throw them out, you know, throw them this side and then we'll be good to go. And right here is our weighing scale, as you can see it. It measures in grams, yeah? So we place it on top of this basin because it needs to be on a firm surface. If you place it on litter, like here, litter is soft, as you can see it. When I press it, it goes down a little bit. And that means that it can give you deceptive weights. So you need to place it on a proper firm surface, one that doesn't proper, easily move, yeah? And you can see that when I press down on it, it measures in grams. Then we shall place this on top. Of course, this one has its own weight. Then we press down here so that it resets. Oh, okay, good. We have reset it right now. So it's at zero. So if you place anything on top here, it should be taking the weight. So we're going to get the chickens. We're only weighing the females, so we shall not weigh any of the males that you see in the distance. Just the females, weigh them, and then get the average weight. We have our book right here. You know, this is a book where we place our weight measurements. Um, if you take a look, you can take a look. This is our, you know, daily records for the chickens and everything. And from the back here, you can see how we take our weight measurements. You can see this is week 12. This was week 13. You see, and we take the weight. So we do this once a week. You know, this was week 11. You can see it. We do it religiously. Week 10, week 9, week 8. So when I talk about doing this religiously, we need to make sure that we do it, you know, properly and religiously. Let's get the chickens in and we take the weight. So inside there we have our birds, as you can see them. Right here we have our weighing scale. So we clip the wings to make sure that the chicken doesn't run. And then we'll place it on top. And then you can see the weight right there. 1,352. 353 grams so he's waiting for a pen then we can start taking the weights there so we need to take about 75 from the top 75 from the bottom that does about five percent so as you can see it's taking the weights 
our birds are right here. So he's going to be picking the birds, passing them over, and whatever we weigh, we get done. One, two, two, four. One zero nine nine. All right, guys, so we are done with weighing the birds. We have only weighed the upper, the upper side, so we're going to weigh the lower side too a little bit later on. I'll tell you guys the average weight uh, and also the weight on target. I'll put that on the screen. Uh, but as you can see, we've brought our feed inside. And already you can see that the birds now want the food. Can you see all of them following the guy who is serving the feed? And can you see how they are all feeding on the feed? Take a look at that. Take a look at that, guys. Yeah? All of a sudden, they now really do want the food, okay? You can see the eagerness at which they are eating the food, yeah? So we created scarcity, and they are literally fighting to eat the food. Literally fighting. That's what we want to do, yeah? We want the birds to literally fight for the food, yeah? And again, we have created scarcity, but we are only giving them in small amounts, yeah? Only 30 kilograms. So in, in a short while... Uh, maybe an hour or so, the 30 kilograms we expect it to be done from the chicken house, and then we can give them a little bit more. But this is the site that we want once food is provided. Until most of the food is done, the birds should literally be competing for the feed. Yeah? So I did like the previous site where the birds were just, you know, standing and chilling. Yeah? So we're going to distribute feed all over the house. The purpose is that you need to make sure you have enough feeders so that most of the birds inside the chicken house can feed without having to compete directly. If you place very few feeders inside the house, that causes a problem. Because if only a few birds or maybe only half the birds can feed directly, then it becomes a problem because that means that only the strong ones will feed. Yeah, only the strong ones will feed. Then the food will get done. Then when you provide food again, only the strong ones will feed. So what will happen is that the big ones will become bigger and the small ones will become smaller. That's not what you want. You want the birds to grow uniformly, you know, properly and uniformly. So that's why you need to make sure the number of feeders inside the house is enough, yeah? So you need around 30 birds per feeder that you place inside the chicken house. This is how you stimulate appetite and stimulate them to eat food and catch up in terms of weight. What's going to happen is that just in case our weights are below target, this is the one way we are going to stimulate them. Because like I've already told you guys, I'm not happy with the fact that our feed consumption is lower than usual. And I honestly won't be surprised if our average weight is below target. Because in this last week, the birds might have slowed down because they think food is available. And that doesn't help in terms of them gaining weight. If they're not eating enough, they certainly won't put on enough weight. So let's wait and see if the weight is below target. Then I know what we are doing right now inside this house is actually going to stimulate them and they're going to want to eat food again. So if you compare what is happening right now to what was happening previously, like just take a look at all the feeders. You can see this one right there, that one next to it, that one next to it, the one next to it. You know, all the birds are all of a sudden interested in eating because they're hungry. They're hungry, yeah? And after a short while, the food is going to get done and we shall make sure they get hungry again and again provide food so that they eat it like gluttons, yeah? You want them to eat it like gluttons. So as you can see right now, all the birds are feeding on the feed like gluttons and that's what we want, yeah? It's going to work, guys. And you can see even the ones climbing on top of the drinkers like those ones. I think there's another one right there. They're not just climbing to chill. They're climbing because they're trying to look for how to feed. Yeah, they don't have enough space to feed from down. So they jump onto the feeders. Take a look at those right there. You can see that, yeah? It's trying to see if it can get feed from the top. That's a beautiful view. Not like before where the birds were literally just chilling on top of the feeder. You know, they were just resting and chilling on top of the feeder. That wasn't nice. This is the kind of site you want, yeah? So right here, you can see that there's some space right here, but it's because I'm standing close by. The moment I walk away, you're going to see birds taking up that space, as you can see, yeah? So the birds are going to take up the space. So they were just a little bit afraid of the fact that I'm too close to them. So now we've come to the lower floor, guys, and we're going to be doing the very same exact thing. As you can see, this is the floor above. Right there, you can see what we've isolated the birds. So uh, you can see the rest of the chicken house. The birds are over there. Again, the feeders here are empty too. As you can see, there is no feed. So we're just going to be weighing the birds quickly. We get to our 75 chickens, and then, boom. These are the birds that have been isolated. These are the, the ones whose fate is to be weighed. They are inside here. 1192. 
A few minutes later, guys, and we are done with the weighing. So same thing, we're going to distribute the feed at the bottom right here. And you're going to see the craze with which they will feed. Like they didn't know what the value of food is. Right there is our mixed mash feed. Okay? So I'm going to start feeding, starting from the corner right there. See how crazy the birds want the food. Take a look at that. Take a look at what's happening right here. You know? Take a look at that. It's like they have never eaten food before. Take a look at this, guys. It's like they don't know what food is. It's like they have never eaten food before. They are probably hungry. And this is what I want, guys. All right, guys. So as you can see, we've finished taking our weights. And this is our weight for the upper section, our weight for the lower section. Our average weight for the lower section is 1122.6. One, two, two average weight for upper section is 1136.5. Our actual average weight is 1129, which is almost 1130. And our target is 1151. That's the lower target. So we have a difference of about 21.5 grams, which is about 22 grams. And honestly, I'm not too surprised that we are below target because the birds are refusing to eat. But with the intervention that we've put into action right now, I'm almost certain that our average weight next week will have caught up and even, you know, gone properly into the average, not at the lower limit, yeah? So I know that we're going to catch up. Let's just keep doing that. I'm very certain that we're going to get our average weight and we're going to turn these chickens into egg-laying monsters. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you can click right here to watch this video where I tried using maggots to feed my chickens. Catch you very soon with another video. Bye-bye.